Our first speaker had her Bachelor in Nursing from the University of Sydney. And through his nursing career, uh, she has gained wide exposure in the fields of orthopedics, general surgery, and trauma, that including critical care and emergency medicine. So to go further, she had her master's degree in trauma science in uh, 2018 with the Queen Mary University of London, part of the London School of Medicine and Dentistry. And since uh, 2003, she assumed the role, the role of trauma coordinator in Tan Tok Seng Hospital. She is the manager of the trauma service and is responsible for the operational, personnel and financial aspects of the trauma program. She also serves as coordinator for the trauma team in monitoring the progress and outcome of patients from the trauma center and assist the identifying areas for improvement, the management of trauma. Our first speaker will speak on pre-hospital trauma life support, then and now. I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Karen Go Chung Shen. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, just let me do a full screen. Hi, um, thank you for the kind introduction, Dr. Andrew. I will speak on uh, PHTLS uh, then and now. So, um, okay. So basically, PHTLS is uh, taking some advice from ATLS, um, Prof. Dr. Norman McSwain, known as the father of PHTLS, actually established um, the draft curriculum of the pre-hospital trauma life support course. And then uh, a committee was established in 1983, and the first textbook was actually published in 1985. PHTLS is actually valid for four years, and uh, it usually gets an update every four years as well. Um, one year after ATLS um, update its syllabus, because they usually take the guidelines from the ATLS uh, syllabus, and they work closely with the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma. So ATLS have come a long way. So we have a few different editions of the textbook. Now we are actually into our ninth edition. So these are the countries that actually have PHTLS in Asia. Um, quite a few countries over here. We have Brunei, China, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, Mongolia, Philippines, Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand. Yeah, um, quite a handful of us um, having this course already running in our countries. So since um, Singapore started our PHTLS course in 2013, we have also helped um, to promulgate this course to Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, as well as Taiwan. Um, if some of you are familiar with the promulgation uh, process, we usually try to help each other in the Asia countries. So we don't have to pay too much to fly the Americans all the way um, to keep the cost of starting the, co uh, the cost low. So the goals of uh, PHTLS is basically to reduce uh, mortality and injury from trauma and provide pre-hospital care providers with knowledge and skills. Basically, um, they want to do what they say is to provide appropriate care to trauma patients. Um, when you have a response, then you, they, will re, they will respond to a call and then they will go to the scene, assess the scene. They will take care of the patient at scene, manage the patient, quickly transfer the patient, do a documentation process, return to service, prepare to, be, to, to set, go out to a response again. So this is a whole cycle of uh, what uh, PHTLS is. Um, preparing our paramedics and uh, pre-hospital care providers to do. The philosophy of PHTLS, um, we do research in pre-hospital care um, on interventions that should have been done for patients at the pre-hospital care, patient care delivery, 
And basically in PHTLS, we want to promote um, critical thinking as the foundation to quality trauma care in the pre-hospital environment. I mean, unlike um, what a lot of us in hospital can do and have e the equipment to perform, um, the pre-hospital care providers don't have the luxury of equipment and all the help that we can get in the hospital. With this current edition um, of PHTLS, they emphasize on the team approach. And instead of just the ABCDE approach, now they emphasize on the X ABCDE approach. The X in front actually represents exsanguinating bleeding. So um, if some of you are familiar with uh, the TCCC course, uh, it's a little bit similar in that sense to ask you to look at uh, Exsanguinating bleeding at scene, try to quickly arrest that and then quickly proceed to the A, B, C, D, E as per the other um, algorithms that we are familiar with. PHTLS is actually um, quite American centric. It was started in America. So you see that the North and South America do have PHTLS course in almost the whole continent. And then the philosophy actually uh, spreads through uh, the rest of the world, as you can see in the world map here, uh, highlighted in this uh, brownish yellow um, highlights. Principle versus preference, that is what we usually emphasize to the paramedics. Principle is how the, um, the preference is how the principle is accomplished. So preference may be changed at scene, depending on the scene, the patient's severity, and also the knowledge of our pre-hospital providers. So principle is what we teach them that um, the patient need. Preference is um, how they can, what they can do to accomplish it. So for example, if you can't intubate a patient at scene, uh, what else can you do? Can you back valve mask the patient, give the patient oral airway, oxygen, LMA? It all depends on what skill level our pre-hospital providers are being uh, trained in. So they focus on uh, principles rather than preferences. So we do not teach protocols, but we teach the principles behind the protocols and explain some of those protocols that the pre-hospital providers may bring up to um, allow us to help them rationalize why a certain principle or why a protocol is being worded in a certain way. We also emphasize on the communication process with the receiving facility, but most of all, um, not to do further harm to the patients. They emphasize on safety, scene assessment, X, A, B, C, D, E, as I've uh, spoken about earlier, and then secondary survey, um, especially when they have time at scene, and then some special considerations with pediatric, obstetrics, and our geriatric populations. We also look at the golden hour. Um, usually is a period of time to emphasize that time is of the essence, so do not play too long at scene. And then we want them to expedite uh, field care and transport the patient to definitive care as fast as possible. So um, the father of uh, PHTLS, Prof. Maxwin, have this um, saying, uh, quote, we have accepted the responsibility, so we must give the patient the best care that we can. What you have done today for the good of the, what have we done today for the good of the mankind? A lot of times uh, when he was here in Singapore uh, promulgating the course to us in 2013, we were very honored to have him. Um, he said something which stuck with me for a long time. He says that the patient did not choose us. We choose to be in this profession. So we must deliver the best care we can for our patient every day. So then and now, I mean, um, we have seen COVID strike and change a lot of our processes. This was a, a promulgation that we done with um, Taiwan just in January 2020 when uh, COVID was sort of brewing, but have not actually blown up. Um, we went down physically to Taiwan to help uh, start up a new center. You can see one of our paramedics here teaching some of the doctors and pre-hospital personnel in Taiwan or the skill station. Um, this is the traditional way that uh, we have been promulgating and teaching PHTLS. 
some of these skill station is irreplaceable. So there is no way some of the training can be done virtually or remotely. Um, but while we establish um, in this uh, fast changing times, we also need to progress quickly. The good thing about um, PHTLS um, or teaching face-to-face -face is the close interaction and the relationship that we can build very quickly in a short period of time. Um, bonding after work, um, after a hard day of teaching with the team on the ground, um, and then taking nice group pictures like that side by side with each other. This happened only in January last year. Right after that, in July, um, we were asked to promulgate to another center also in Taiwan. This time around, because of COVID, um, we cannot go down to help them. But uh, because of some of the instructors that we have already trained, we have to do remote monitoring. So you can see this is like a screen, uh, black rim. That's a screen that they are actually videoing for the for Enoch, one of my colleagues who is also an affiliate instructor with PHTLS. So he's monitoring how the instructors are teaching. Are they teaching well um, and checking off some of the instructors uh, that are new? So this happened really quickly. So instead of nice uh, pictures, we have to take uh, Zoom pictures uh, like that side by side with the team on the ground. Um, still be able to build relationship, but nothing really beats face to face, honestly. Yeah, and then group pictures like that compared to the ones that we could take earlier. PHGLS and AEMT also progressed really quickly. Um, because of the COVID situation, they have put a lot of resources online. They have also come up with the hybrid PHGLS course whereby they have all the lectures um, that is also online that the students can go online to listen to all the lectures and then minimize sites on sites contact face-to-face uh, -face time. We only come in together to, um, to do the skills on site and face-to-face, -face, whereas all the lectures are done um, either via their um, proprietary hybrid uh, version of lectures, standardized lectures. Uh, what sometimes uh, we do in Singapore is also Zoom lectures, whereby our instructors will deliver the lecture via the Zoom uh, platform or any other online platform uh, for a day and then we come together the next day to have our skills courses. Yeah. So a lot of the information can be found in the NAEMT website um, if you guys want to take down this address and if you guys are also interested in starting PHTLS course you can write to them or you can write to us. We can also help to link you up with NAEMT to help you guys start the PHTLS course in your country, even in these uh, challenging times. Okay, uh, just a little bit of uh, advertisement. We also, so that's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we also running the Singapore Trauma um, and Acute Care Conference. So those of you who are interested uh, in registering, these are the QR codes. The conference is on 23 and 24 of April this year. Uh, we are also looking at abstract submissions. So if you have uh, research papers, so please feel free to um, submit your registration and your um, abstract online for us. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I shall hand the time over to Dr. Andrew.